SMCI has been on an incredible run up 838% over the last 12 months and today alone it is up 6%. So is this still a great company to invest in? Is it cheaper than the likes of Nvidia and those other companies in the industry? As always, we're going to take a look at this company in detail. We'll look at the top line revenue growth year on year as well as their bottom line net income growth. We'll have a quick look at the health of the company, their total cash versus their total debt. We'll also see how well they're performing versus some other competitors in the industry of a similar size. And notably, we want to see what are the institutions doing? Are they also buying? Are they selling or are they just holding in the more recent quarters? And as always, we'll look at some important financial metrics to see how the growth of this company has started to generate some incredible run over the last 12 months. And we'll also look at the essential insiders to see whether or not they have been buying, whether they are selling and discuss our points on this. And as always, we will run them through the valuation model to get to our intrinsic value as well as our acceptable buy price given that investor margin of safety, and also discuss what Wall Street are forecasting for the next 12 months. So jumping straight into this company, as we can see, if you were holding this over the last 10 years, you would be up an incredible 4,311%, although do bear in mind the majority of the growth of this company has started from last year. In fact, when you look at the A52 week range, it has gone from $87 to an all time high of just under $1,100. And we do see its forward PE sitting at just below 40 with a market cap of 48 billion. Now, in terms of their numbers, what we always like to see, 3 to 7% growth on the top line. However, with these companies that are fast growing, incredible growth, we should expect a lot more. 3.5 billion reported in June 2019. And in the latest annual report, we see 7.1 billion. So we can see their top line has more than doubled over the last five years. When we take a look at their revenue on a granular level, we do see a drop into 2020. But from there, we do see some nice growth. And on that trailing 12 months, whilst we are still some months away from the full year report, we see 9.3 billion. So we are expecting some very strong growth into 2024 June point. Now in terms of the bottom line, 72 million reported in 2019 and unlike the top line, we see growth every single year, 640 million in the latest year, June 2023. And again, the trailing 12 months showing signs of that growth is not going to stop. So overall, some strong growth on both the top line as well as the bottom line. In terms of their total health, well, cash and short term investments versus total debt, 248 million reported in 2019, 726 from their latest quarterly report. So they now hold nearly three times as much cash than they did five years ago. And in comparison to their total debt numerically and directionally, we can see 24 million to 401 million. Still, they hold more cash than they do debt. So that is a positive sign. And we will discuss that when we look at that net debt to EBITDA metric shortly. Very quickly then, looking at some competitors in the industry of the technological hardware storage and peripherals, we have HBQ, we have Dell Technologies, as well as some other well-known companies. Now, over the last year, what we can see, some incredible growth up 797% absolutely blasting through any of these others. Now we do see Dell up 204%. Bear in mind though, some of this growth would have been from today. I believe they're up around 20 to 30% given they had some strong earnings. Now over the last five years, again, there is no company that comes anywhere close up 4,582%. And we can see the next best performing Dell up 342. Now, this is probably really important, especially for this company to understand that just because they've had some really extreme returns over the last five years, it doesn't mean that this is any kind of indicator to future growth. Now, in terms of institutional ownership, we see 73% and we see 2.1 billion worth of sales by the institutions over the last 12 months with a little bit more buying over the same time period. So institutions do quite like this company. They are buying more shares than they are selling. Although what we note is a bit of inconsistency. Q1, a little bit more buying than selling of 2023. Q2, we see the opposite. However, in both Q3 and Q4, we see a lot more buying than selling. So we can see in the more recent period, institutions have become really bullish on this company. But please do remember, do your own due diligence and never copy what these institutions do. 
As always, buyers and sells for SMCI at least 100 shares over the last month. Now, interestingly, we see both buys and we see sales. Now, what I personally say, insider buying, very bullish. We believe that insiders buy for one reason, and that is the share price will go up. Insider selling that we do know here, again, I wouldn't personally say it's a bearish signal. We don't know why insider sell. It could be personal or financial. But from the insider buying, we see the director on the 1st of February buying 2,000 shares. Now they are up around 61%. And this is why we say selling isn't a bearish signal. If we look at the last three of the four sales, if they had have kept it, they would have been up a significant amount more. So always take this information with a pinch of salt. Now, before we jump into these metrics, just to let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article. If you want to grab a copy of this latest article or any of the others that we have done completely free, just click on that pinned comment below. So jumping into the metrics, the free cash flow per share, as always for new viewers, earnings is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting. So we like to draw your attention to the free cash flow. Negative 78 cents in 2014. Now we can see the inconsistencies year on year. And in fact, pretty much one year positive followed by negative. 2022, negative 944. 2023, it did flip very strongly. Now what we are expecting in 2024 is a little bit of a drop to 760. But overall, I would say pretty inconsistent. In terms of the sales growth, here we have some strong growth over the period. Double digits nearly every single year. We see that pandemic here where it dropped 5%. The last two years and even 2023, 37% growth to the top line, looking very, very strong. We can see numerically it's gone from 1.5 billion to 7.12. Shares outstanding, they have done a little bit of issuing of shares for your position to be diluted, but with the majority of these growth companies, it is typical, and to be honest, over the last 10 years, the share price has gone up dramatically, so this wouldn't really be a worry for you. In terms of the ROIC, as always, we want to see 10% or more as a minimum to give us faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. They've pretty much been around that 10% or more for the majority of the last 10 years, looking incredibly strong, 33% in that latest period. Operating margin, very inconsistent. I'm not a fan of 2018 to 2021, where it did drop down into the very low single digits. What's nice to note is over the last two years, they have improved on that operational efficiency, 11% in 2023, looking very strong. Free cash flow margin, as we saw above on that free cash flow share, very inconsistent. 2023, however, looking good at 9%. But again, do bear that in mind when you are looking at your investment thesis and margin of safety. Net debt to EBITDA then, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. This shows us the strength of the balance sheet. Zero effectively means it wouldn't even take them one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. 2024 expected to be the same. So we can see this is a strong company, a very strong balance sheet. So no worries with that aspect of the company. So let's jump into the valuation. As always, if you enjoy the content, values being provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. So let's jump into the really the only model that we're going to be using for supercomputers here, which is, as we can see, the discounted cash flow model. So we have inputted the free cash flow over the last 10 years. Average growth rate negative 174%. As we can see, it was very inconsistent. Forward looking, we've gone 20%. Now, again, this is lower than analyst estimates, and we will play around with this shortly. Discount rate 8%. With that, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. When we add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, and divide by the shares outstanding, we get an intrinsic value of $761. And with the market value at currently 915, we have an overvaluation signal. Now, bear in mind, this model is essentially following our growth rate. Now, it really depends. As an investor, you may be a lot more optimistic like the markets. So, for example, if you were to input something like 30% over the next 10 years and beyond, you would see that it does look very cheap still with a lot of room to grow. If you wanted to be more consistent or, in fact, more conservative than the 20% we initially put and wanted to go for something like 12%, you can see that it is very, very overvalued. So again, it does come down to the growth rate and your expectations over the next 10 years and beyond. So do bear that in mind. The intrinsic value is $761 based on what we just discussed. And don't forget, you can grab a copy of this valuation model if you want to get to the intrinsic value, as well as the acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or those on your watch list, or even if you want to run through SMCI based on your own estimates and judgments. So typically, we would start off with a margin of safety of 10% that we would use if we believed it had a wide moat, strong financial metrics and good forward-looking data. 
So again, it does really depend on what margin of safety you are after. Right now though, we can see it is currently trading above what we believe to be the intrinsic value. But again, bear that in mind that our intrinsic value is derived from the growth rate that we have at 20%. Again, if you do argue that this could be higher or lower, this will dramatically affect that intrinsic value. In terms of Wall Street and what they're forecasting over the next 12 months, well, they have a price target of $880. So they also believe the share price will come down by about 4% over that 12 month period. But again, with Wall Street, always bear in mind when the share price goes up, if we revisit this next week or next month, they will essentially increase their price forecast. So do consider that and take that with a pinch of salt. As always, though, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. When we did review NVIDIA not too long ago, in fact, we can jump into that valuation now. We can see that when we looked at their specific intrinsic value, this was a few, well, in fact, last week, so do bear that in mind, we got to an intrinsic value of $753. So we saw it not too far off its current price and Wall Street were looking at some upside over the next 12 months. So in comparison between the two stocks, we do see SMCI as slightly more overvalued than Nvidia and forecasting with Wall Street expecting downside with SMCI. However, they are anticipating upside with NVIDIA over the next 12 months. As always though, do let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.